Good morning. Welcome to McDowell United Methodist Church, where we make sure that we always gather together in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a blessing it is that we have entered into another month by God's blessings, and the greatest blessing we received is the rain. Finally, it came. And boy, if you had not enjoyed the rain yesterday, um, wait till it, it unfolds today. I'm expecting some more severe weather, but the rain that came at the right time, and as I was driving to, towards the church, I looked out on the fields. You know what? I can see when the beans are standing a little taller, a little kind of spread out. Uh, and if nature can enjoy this bounty and, uh, you know, show us their contentment and their praise in such gestures, how much more we as human beings are called to be able to thank the Lord for each blessing that comes to us, sometimes maybe in sprinkling form, sometimes in a whole deluge that we cannot handle it but the aspect of receiving and giving. And that's what my reflection is today about. What comes to us, how we receive it, and then how we give it to other people. Time of sharing. So with that thought, I thought we'll begin our worship service, and I do not have a bulletin. Thank you. Usually I pick up one just in case, and I end up two of them, and today, I am, I did my bad. I didn't pick up the bulletin from there. Okay, looking at the bulletin, we have announcements. Next Sunday, we have our outdoor worship service. And anything on that, Ginny? Um, just to grab a sign up sheet, we're going to pass that around one more time. So. Okay. And then we have the nurture committee meeting uh, on the 20th. Um, right here after the worship service and Ginny and the committee members, they have some future planning to do, so let's come together. Uh, we have Sunday school kickoff coming up next month. Please inform the children that are part of our uh, Sunday school celebration that uh, we do have plans for them, and that is the day that we uh, begin with hay rides and wiener roast and um, pumpkin things, lots of interesting things, so they can enjoy the time of fellowship. Uh, next week's volunteers are already listed here. Any other announcements before I share with the birthdays and anniversaries? Uh, we're going to have a love gift around one more time. Okay, love gift offering is coming around. Okay, no other announcements. Then let's recognize the birthdays uh, on August 6th, which is today. We have Prince Petrie's birthday, and on the 12th, uh, Harold uh, celebrates his birthday. So, and no anniversaries are mentioned here. So, Harold, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. They switched the donation box on you, right? They did it purposely, Harold. Many blessings on your year, and as you participate in the ministry of the church, may you continue to be part of God's plan of salvation. Uh, our prayer list is already here, and I know that some of you, one or two you, uh, of you have uh, more names added to that last week, and so continue to lift each other up in the prayers. Okay, if no other announcements, then let's begin our worship service. I do want to recognize the visitors we have here. Terry? Oh, um, I have a good friend, um, Terry Ward, and her daughter, April. Um, April and they're going to be doing the Bible study on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So if you Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, let's begin our worship service with call to worship that we read responsibly. If you're able to stand, that would be very appropriate. Day after day, an abundance of God's love, morning by morning, 
new signs of blessings are sent in our way from the heavenly bounty of the Lord. A gentle rain, an awesome sunset, a friend's embrace, a child's smile, a new insight, a sense of peace, a shared meal, a treasured moment. All around and deep within us are signs of God's presence. How can we not sing of God's faithfulness? God has created the eye for seeing, the ear for hearing, and the mind for thinking. He is with us in our worship. The elements in front of us allow us to think of God's love towards us because these are the symbols of the sacrifice of Christ. His body and blood were offered by the Lord for our forgiveness of sins. The beauty we see and the glory we hear comes to us from the words of the angels who worship the Lord day and night. Our opening hymn is number 128, He Leadeth Me. Our prayer of confession, shall we read this together, please? This is our opportunity to raise our voice with those in heaven to offer God all the glory and praise. The work of our salvation has been accomplished. We come in one fellowship with God to rejoice for each life on this earth that has heard the words of comfort and forgiveness. The beauty we see and the glory we hear comes to us from the words of the angels who worship the Lord day and night. For our reflection today and 
in the coming weeks, words of assurance. Uh, loving God, with prophetic witness and a powerful spirit, you have sought to guide us to faithful living. Each day is a learning experience in your love and grace. Remind us to be centered in you each day of our lives. Amen. You may be seated, please, and our hymn of preparation is number 139. My goodness, how long it has been since we sang that hymn. Very appropriate, touching.
thank you so much for blessing us with your beautiful voices this morning. And at this time, we have children's message. Okay. I have to go home and look through my jar of buttons.
because I used to collect buttons, a lot of them. I, I'm disposing of few things, but I still have some bottles full of buttons, so that is a good focus for my prayer life. Thank you, Jeannie. At this time, we come together for a time of prayer, and what a good segue into our time of prayer with uh, thoughtfulness of the buttons. Uh, we have a, a thank you note here from Sh uh, Shriners Hospital, and they are thanking us, a note of thank you for uh, our generous gift of $572 in memory of Jackie Mays to Shriners Hospital for Children. Your support helps maintain our commitment to reaching as many children as possible wherever they may live and offering them our unique patient-centered wraparound care, regardless of the family's ability to pay. So thank you for that aspect of thankfulness. Um, any other prayer requests we have this morning? Yeah, Tina? Okay, so Emmett surgery on 11th. Yeah. Okay. Let's bow our heads then and come in the presence of the Lord. And maybe you can hold on to the buttons that you have. And before I begin my prayer, depending on what you have heard from Jeannie, maybe there is a prayer hidden in that button that you would like to offer at this time to the Lord. Dear Lord of creation, our Savior, the blessedness that we feel because we are part of your family. You have chosen us from this world to become part of the celebration that goes on in heaven. Your praise is offered. Your glory is revealed and praised. Heavenly God, we in our humanity are so busy living this life on earth, that we even forget to lift our eyes over and above the mountains and call upon your name, a word of thanksgiving, a word of praise. This morning as we gather on this day of Sabbath, O oh Lord, we are thankful for the rain that you sent in our way. Even the creation rises up to offer you praise and thanksgiving. And we celebrate the moisture and the humidity and the change of temperature that brings into our lives a special kind of blessing. And yes, Lord, as we gather here for the ministry of this church is central to our heart, thankful for our guests who have enriched our thoughtfulness, thoughtful praise of worship with their talent Thankful for all those who are present here this morning because you have called us from the world to enter into your day of rest with words of praise and thanksgiving. And Heavenly God, as we come together, we know the world is still changing. And more and more as we look around, we know there is despair, there is anxiety, Wars are raging, floods are taking place, fires are burning. And we at human level are become, becoming a community that does not show the fruit of the spirit because we have left the presence of Christ in us somewhere way behind. It is time for us to wake up and take care of our own selves when it comes to the spiritual matters. Because each of us has been baptized in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for the remission of our sins. Help us to claim that baptism each day. 
though the world changes around us, but those who have the stamp of Christ on them, they are well rooted and grounded. Lord, make us a channel of blessing for all those with whom we have encounters. We bring our prayers of thanksgiving for the surgery that went well, for the birthdays that get to be celebrated, and then the upcoming surgery for Emmett, those who are homebound in the nursing homes, those who are going through therapy long term. Loving God, your graciousness never departs from us. And that is why we have the courage to come in your presence with words of intercession and words of praise. Each of us has different calling. Our ministry, though it is based in our faith in Christ, takes us to different places. And each time we share the story of Christ in our own way, we bring glory to your name. Heavenly God, bless each one of us that are gathered here, and most of our family members are not here today, part of our worship service, but your blessings abide with them. The coming week has its own challenges, its own opportunities to be in ministry with many people, and so guide us through all those situations. May your hovering cloud always protect us from the heat that Satan sends in our way. And may the lighting pillar at night always keep the path lighted, the path of righteousness lighted and open for us so we can never get lost in the hustle and bustle of this world. Heavenly God, bless our families wherever we are. Uphold us in your grace. Hear our prayer, O Lord, because we ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, we continue our worship service as we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord, and we need help from our ushers, please. <laughs> We know, Lord, that coming in your presence with gifts of thanksgiving is pleasing in your sight. Our offerings speak to the sacrificial love that we show towards your kingdom. Bless each one of us to continue to serve you with the power of faith that you have given to us in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading today comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. 
He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. We are entering into, also have entered into the new month. And each month uh, calls us to be God's witnesses in so many different ways. And I thought that maybe for August, the aspect of these four verses uh, need to be our guide as we journey through these uh, times of change of seasons and a busy season ahead for harvesting and I know that everybody is gathering up the fruit of their labors, canning, freezing, um, whatever goes on around the kitchen. Um, this busy season also allows us to take a breather and reflect on what it means for us as believers of Jesus Christ to receive and then to give. Aspect of hospitality has both of these gestures. And I know that uh, each culture in its own way celebrates uh, hospitality in different ways. Uh, back then when Jesus was talking to the crowd, simple hospital, uh, hospitality gesture was to uh, keep a bucket of water or jars of water in, uh, in your yard available for the person who is coming to visit you because they would have walked miles and miles in the sand and dust and they needed some fresh water to clean up themselves. And we know that that's where the first miracle of Jesus takes place. He changes that water that was meant for cleansing and uh, aspect of hospitality into wine. So what a great way for us to think about the availability of water and how it began the ministry of Christ for us. It's a challenge. And that's exactly what Christ is trying to teach uh, to his disciples, that when you are out in the world speaking on behalf of me, speaking on behalf of the kingdom of God, you are the one who are the example that they will see and how is it going to project to the people that you are my people is by receiving. That's what Christ asks them to do. Receive people in my name. We all know what this receiving thing does to our lives. Those of you who shop online Amazon, Etsy, wherever your shopping mall is. How do you receive the packages when they come to your doorstep? You can't wait to open them and see if that is the exact thing that you had ordered, the price that you paid, so on and so forth. It might be a decorative piece, a lamp or a shade or a pair of shoes or something for the house. Uh, I'm hearing people even order furniture over the line. I don't know how that works, but yeah. Each aspect of receiving builds up its own uh, cloud of expectation. And when we receive something, then that joy that we felt can never be substituted. You have a feeling of satisfaction. You have a feeling of accomplishment. And when Christ teaches his disciples to receive someone in his name, these are not the packages with Amazon smiling on it, no. These are human beings, Christ says, that you will be receiving. It's a package of expectations. It's a package of joy, you don't know what lies ahead in this person's life, but you are called to receive 
receive the person in my name. And if you remember, when Christ sent out his disciples two by two, I think two weeks ago, I shared this uh, message with you. Um, if you remember or not, it's not a pop quiz question, but for my reflection, I need to remember how I link my uh, reflections each week. Uh, two weeks ago, I shared about that aspect. When Christ sends these 72 people two by two, and he says, go into the house that receives you. Stay there. And the blessing of that receiving, blessing that your presence brings to this house will stay with the household. See how strong this aspect of receiving is? All that expectations and hope and joy and uh, maybe certain anxiety and all that mixed together, Christ sends his disciples into the world that those who receive you stay there, share the good news. And if they don't, then you just dust off your shoes and move out. How many times I had to do that out of certain churches that I was serving that they did not receive me as their pastor because of all the agenda that I have. Look at here. And so you always say a prayer of forgiveness. In that receiving, there is that aspect also. Those who receive you, the blessings of God stay with them, as, God, as Christ mentioned to his disciples. But those who do not receive you, God is the one who deals with them. Those blessings depart from them. Story of Abraham, how many times he received God's angels in wilderness? He was just sitting outside his tent, and if you know the climate of the desert, how hot it gets, and he must have thought, am I looking at right? Those three people are walking towards me, or is it just some kind of uh, uh, hallucination or something, it's too much heat? No. Those were the people that God sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham, when he finds who they are, he at once notices them. He receives them as God's messengers, and he pleads on behalf of his nephew to save his life. When you receive somebody, then there, there are rewards. As Abraham did, he pleads on behalf of Lot and his family. Those two towns were destroyed, but his nephew and the, his family were safe. When Christ says that when somebody receives you in the name of the Lord, in my name, when they receive you, they will not um, miss their reward. Which means that when you receive a person as your guest, as hospitable as you are, your gestures of love and kindness, accommodation, adjustments, they all bring God's blessings to you. Not only that, Christ also says that all this receiving and giving this gesture of hospitality has to be in his name, in his name, in the name of Christ. How many of us receive our families, our children, our guests, a stranger in the name of God? Somehow or other, that culture is missing from our hospitality. And God always challenges us that each aspect of our ministry in this church, in our families, in our communities, needs to be in the name of Christ. And what does Christ say? That if you give a cup of cold water to the least of these, a cup of cold water. Folks, if you live in that age and time and in that kind of climate, I'm sure at present if you go to Arizona or Nevada where temperature is 110 and heat index is through the roof, and you offer a cup of cold water to somebody who is homeless by the roadside, what would be their gesture towards you? Exactly. That's what Christ was trying to teach us, that when there is a need, 
when you feel the need of some person, it's not only that you are receiving and receiving and receiving, but there comes a time when you have to give. Smallest giving. Christ doesn't ask us to send a whole package of Amazon to somebody or buy an expensive, the most expensive gift out of Etsy. He says, just a cup of cold water. If you can give that to somebody, you have already extended your hospitality to the other person. And remember, it has to be done in the name of the Lord, not in your name, not in your own egocentric way of making a display in front of people. You are offering this cup of cold water, smallest gesture in the name of Christ. And you know, Christ is a friend of small things. He uh, says that if you have faith as big as a mustard seed, and if you have that much faith, you can move mountains. And I often wonder why do we have to use dynamites? We need some Christians, some believers with just that small faith as big as mustard seed, and I ask them to say to the mountains, move. And Christ says they will move into the ocean. That's how powerful those small gestures of giving are. It's not only receiving, but in response to that, those small gestures of giving, they bring about God's kingdom, a real thing. They make it a reality for so many people. As we enter into this new month, uh, the main challenge in front of us is to be hospitable. In these four verses, Christ is inviting us to not only be able to receive, but also to give. Receiving has its rewards, Giving has its rewards. Where are we? Are we always on the uh, receiving end? And our prayers are, Lord, give me, give me, give me. Or is my prayer also, Lord, what can I do in this situation to help? How can this be a supportive ministry? All around us, Needs are there. God calls us today to be the aspect of giving and receiving. As we come together for the communion this morning, I think the least that God did for us, and he is reminding us, he showed us his love. His son was given to us. Pretty soon, in a few months, we will be receiving this message. A son is given to us. A child has been born, in the words of Prophet Isaiah. And when you receive this son, when you receive this gift, you not only receive the physical relationship, but you receive the savior of the world. And how do we receive that blessing? It is through our participation at this table, where the symbols of Christ's death and resurrection speak to us who he is. Uh, let's open on page 12 and celebrate the communion this morning. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. 
That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Page 13, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy.
Before we have the benediction and benediction response, I've been told that postlude might be a little bit longer since we have the special team dismissing us this morning. So if you, after the benediction response, if you would just take your seats and enjoy the music, that would be fine. May your coming in and going out be blessed each time you gather to worship the Lord in his full glory. As you leave to face the world, let the radiance of his love show forth in your everyday living. Bless God's name, so you may be continually blessed. Amen.
I got my button. Somebody gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs>